All right, it is August of 2021, and that means that school is starting all over the country, all over the world. And uh, I've noticed in recent years, there have been a lot of questions to me uh, about my job in terms of uh, interview assignments. And uh, sometimes it's for a career development class, sometimes it's for a biology class, a forensics class. And it goes anywhere from junior high students to high school, even into college. And of course, I also get questions from medical students as well. So uh, I field hundreds of these requests, um, sometimes, you know, over a couple of month period. And then it starts up again in the winter when a new semester starts, um, probably depending on the plan uh, that the teacher has made up. So what I decided to do this year because I simply do not have the time to honor all of these interview requests, I decided to make a video and uh, have a little questionnaire here that somebody emailed to me. And uh, these questions are pretty standard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and answer these. And uh, basically, um, if there's something in your interview that I didn't answer, then you can post a comment to this video. Um, and then I'll try to answer it. So, uh, but I figured since this is a pretty standard uh, set of interview questions, I'm gonna go through it one by one and you can watch this. And um, if you want, you know, confirmation that I approved of this, you can just leave a comment or email me. And then that way, uh, when you turn it in, at least you've uh, made some attempt to communicate with me. Um, I think this is perfectly ethical and legal for your assignments because I will answer these questions exactly the same way, whether it's uh, one person that asked me or 200 that asked me. So it just makes sense to, to do them all in one video and then let you guys go through it. So the first question is, what are the responsibilities in this position? Well, again, I'm Dr. Wolf. I'm a forensic pathologist. And what are the responsibilities? Well, the I'll tell you what I tell people when I go to court and they ask about my job. Uh, and that is my job is to do autopsies on deceased individuals to arrive at a cause of death and a manner of death. So basically, um, you know, I use information from medical records, law enforcement, medical legal death investigators. I combine that together. I do the complete autopsy and then I produce an autopsy report an autopsy report is a legal document, and that can be used for criminal trials, it can be used for insurance settlements, it can be used for civil settlements or things like workman's comp. Um, and then, of course, you know, I can do autopsies for families to uh, those who simply just want uh, some answers about why their loved one died. Uh, next is, uh, did I plan to be in this career or did it happen by chance? No, I did not plan this. I don't think it surprises anyone who knows me that I became a forensic pathologist. Uh, I've always been a little bit of a morbid individual. Um, not a big fan of uh, being with a lot of people like in an office or something. Uh, so I didn't actually decide until after I had finished medical school. Um, you know, I went to college and I got a degree in microbiology. Uh, I worked in research for a couple of years. And then at that point, I got into medical school, finished medical school and went into pathology residency, became of a hospital pathologist. And then uh, after a few years in hospital pathology, I decided to go into forensics. There was a local uh, position at our local medical examiner office. And I was able to get that fellowship position and do it. And I love it. And so it's actually been an excellent decision, and I have not looked back once. Um, and then it says, how did I choose this career? Well, I mean, like I said, it, it wasn't something that I predetermined when I was 18 years old. Um, I basically was a pathologist in the hospital, and I was looking at my future and looking at the, the things that I needed in terms of um, time off and you know, responsibilities, um, call time, like being on call. And uh, being a forensic pathologist was a much better uh, arrangement for me personally than being a hospital pathologist. Uh, did anyone have an influence in my life or career direction? No, actually they didn't. Um, I am the first in my family to finish college 
and the first in my family to finish medical school and become a doctor. So I kind of came up with it all on my own. I didn't have any particular mentor that I worked with. Of course, when I was in fellowship, um, I had a, a mentor that was, uh, or multiple mentors actually, that were forensic pathologists that I learned from. But I had already made the decision to go into that career at this point. At that point. Um, what education or training is needed? So this is a big one. I actually have a video on my page uh, regarding that, but I'll go ahead and go through it really quickly. So college degree, so usually a four-year degree. Some people finish in three years. Um, it doesn't really matter what you major in. I find that it's helpful to major in a science because I think it prepares you very well for medical school, and it prepa prepares you well for the MCAT, which is the, the test you take to, you know, as part of your qualification to get into medical school. So um, once you get to medical school, you finish, that's four years usually uh, in the United States anyway. And then uh, there's a residency, which is usually four years of, of pathology training. And then there's a one-year fellowship, which is special training in forensic pathology for an entire year. So all told, it's 13 years after uh, high school. Uh, how much does the education cost? Well, you know, that depends. Uh, first of all, if you win scholarships, that's going to be very helpful. I didn't have any scholarships, and uh, my education was, um, remember, I, I was in medical school 20 years ago. So my total burden was probably about $150,000. And from what I understand, medical schools today are more expensive than that. So I think you're going to be up past 200000 on most of those. Uh, but you would just have to check, you know, your local medical schools that you're interested in going to. What advice uh, do I have to get into the career? Well, for one, you have to be excellent at science. You have to be science-minded. You have to be logical. Um, you know, from a practical perspective, you can't have a weak stomach. You have to uh, be able to handle so so-called gross things because we are dissecting humans, uh, some of which are decomposed. So, um, but I think the most important thing is to have a scientific and logical mind because we operate on fact. We can't make assumptions uh, in this job. We have to operate on fact. Uh, describe a typical day at work. Okay, so a typical day at work for me is I usually go in in the morning, um, seven or eight o'clock. I review the cases for the day. You know, they're like a blurb. A man was found dead in a home. A uh, car was on fire, a man was shot in an alley, whatever. And I review the cases really quickly. And then at that point, my assistant will bring the body out of the morgue and we will begin the autopsy. Uh, that is consisting of an external exam first in which I describe the body in such a way that, you know, you can picture it from reading the report. That means hair color, eye color, presence of tattoos, presence of injuries, clothing, property, that sort of thing. And once we've done that and we've collected any trace evidence we need, at that point, then we do the internal exam. And that's what most people are familiar with. So the surgical part of the exam. And what happens at, at that point is we open up the head, the neck, the chest, abdomen, pelvis, and any other area of the body that needs to be dissected in order to arrive at the cause and manner of death. Um, and then at that point, you know, basically I write up a preliminary of my findings. You know, a patient had a heart attack. Uh, send it to, you know, whoever needs that, whether it's the coroner or some other law enforcement or something. And uh, then that's it. Then I go home. So a typical work day can be a couple of hours or it can be all day, depending on what kind of cases I have. Uh, is there any field specific information uh, that is different from working in any other field? Well, I mean, yes, it's it's pretty unusual to uh, work with dead bodies, although morticians uh, are someone uh, that works with dead bodies. But in this case, um, field specific, I mean, you know, you're, we're looking at uh, cause and manner of death um, using, you know, the scientific method. So we have the forensic science aspect. Um, and then, you know, like I said before, you have to have a strong stomach. Um, you know, the smells are not so good sometimes and the sights, I mean, obviously, you've got maggots sometimes if people are decomposing. Um, and then the sounds. I mean, you know, we have uh, the bone saw sawing through various bones, the skull and the ribs and things like that. So 
Um, you know, it's a sensory type job. Uh, you have to be able to be able uh, rather to uh, detach yourself. And even though this is your patient, it's not necessarily a person anymore. It's a body from which you must uh, gather evidence. And that is the autopsy itself. Um, what personality qualities do you need? So playing on what I just said, you have to be able to communicate well uh, to law enforcement, to lawyers, to coroners, medical examiners, um, and the public, because a lot of time you testify in front of juries for cases. But um, more so, I think you can't become personally attached to the case. I mean, this is a person at one point who died, and now you have the body, and you have to tell the story that they couldn't tell. You have to talk about the diseases they have, the injuries they might have, and create an autopsy report. So uh, you can't get uh, emotionally inf affected or personally involved with these cases. So if you don't have the ability to do that and pull yourself back uh, from traumatic cases or just um, dis emotionally disturbing cases, this is definitely not the field for you. Um, what do you need to get ahead in this field? I think, again, it's what I just said. You have to be able to uh, detach yourself emotionally. You have to be able to finish your work day and then not be haunted by the things you see. I can go in and work and do these cases. And by the time I go back to my car, I'm not even thinking about them anymore until I write the report. That's just a personality quality that I've always had. And um, it's something that I think you can hone. But if you're too sensitive about stuff, definitely not going to be a good career uh, for you. Uh, what other jobs did I have before this position? Well, I mean, um, before I went to medical school, um, I was a virology and molecular biology researcher at a university. So, uh, you know, I worked with hepatitis C, I worked with melanoma, I worked with adenovirus, um, did a lot of molecular biology, learned a lot. Um, th so that was a scientific job. I also did gross anatomy instruction when I was in medical school. But before that, I just worked at a golf course when I was in college. So you don't need to necessarily start a science career and just be immersed in it until the very, from the beginning to the end. You should do other stuff to get some life experience. Um, what do I like most about the job? Well, what I like most about the job is to be able to, number one, give families answers. A lot of people say I would not want you know, I would not want my family member to have an autopsy. And yet I can't tell you how many families have thanked me personally for answering questions about their loved one, whether it's genetic diseases or whether there was a mystery of why they died and I solved it for them. So that is very fulfilling. The second would be the justice element. Um, we are part of the justice system. And uh, as a result, um, we go to court and we help um, foster cases uh, in terms of criminal convictions um, and also malpractice uh, cases and things like that. So basically, the justice element uh, of this job is very fulfilling, you know, provided that you're doing things correctly and by a logical uh, approach. Um, what do I like least about the job? Um, well, I mean, it's unpredictable. So you have to be able to accept some level of unpredictability. I don't know tomorrow if I'm going to have... 10 cases from a plane crash, if I'm going to have a murder, if I'm going to have a child uh, that's died in some way, or if I'm going to have nothing. So the unpredictability can, can be chaotic. And also in my personal practice, I have to travel a fair amount because I have to go to various sites to do autopsies uh, based on people calling me to do that. Uh, next is what is the average salary for this type of career? Now I'm sort of old school. Um, I ha was brought up in a way in which asking about salary was actually rude. Like you wouldn't really want to ask about that until you get into a job interview and you know, you're making terms for your, for your, uh, your job and people are talking about salary. So I don't talk really about what I make, but I mean, I'm a doctor and I also do legal work and most doctors make at least a couple hundred thousand dollars. So it's going to be at that or above. Uh, but it depends on how hard you work. You do 50 autopsies a year versus 500 autopsies a year. It's a gigantic difference. Um, is the job stressful? No, for me, it's not that stressful. Um, I'm very busy. Um, I have an area that I cover of that is several hundred thousand people. And so I do have a lot of work. So I do have to uh, find ways to decompress. I mean, I'm pretty good about that at baseline. 
but it can be stressful when I have a lot of reports to do and deadlines and court can be stressful as well. Uh, do I have a good work-life balance? And do I have the time for hobbies and other things? Yeah, actually the work-life balance in this career is excellent. I can't imagine going to medical school and doing something like this that I love and having such a good work-life balance. Um, I could not have created a better job. So yeah, I think it's excellent. I have plenty of time for hobbies and travel and things like that. Not that I'm traveling right now due to this pandemic, but I did used to like to travel. Uh, in the future, uh, will I continue doing this or will be the plans? Uh, will I have uh, plans for a change? Um, you know, I can do this forever as long as my brain works and my hands work. Uh, so yeah, I probably will continue to do autopsies, but I could see myself being a legal consultant as well if I decided to retire or um, working as a university professor teaching forensics uh, or a medical school teaching pathology. Um, let's see, where do I see the field going? I think you're going to see a lot more technology involved in this field. You're going to see a lot more molecular technology and you're going to see a lot more radiology techniques. So that would be uh, things like CT scans and MRIs post-mortem um, to aid in autopsy or perhaps to replace autopsy in cases where uh, the family, you know, refuses it and it's not a criminal case. Um, so I see a, a lot more radiology being involved and they've been talking about that for years. Um, if I could do it all over again, would I still choose this career? Yes, I would. Um, you know, there's a lot of things I personally like to do in my life. I have a lot of creative pursuits. Would I have become an artist or something at some point? Yeah, I think that would have been cool. But would I become a forensic pathologist again? Yes, I think I'm actually pretty good at it. And I think because I'm good at it and I enjoy it, I do good public service. And so I feel like I'm putting my time in and doing good for the community as well. Uh, do I have any school, career, or life advice? Um, as always, you to get into medical school, you have to have good grades. So try to get good grades. They don't have to be perfect. Um, try to get experience in the field. Uh, involving things like, uh, you know, seeing autopsies or maybe becoming a deputy coroner or a medical legal death investigator if you're interested in this. Some people go the mortician route, do that for a little bit, and then decide they want to go uh, be in pathology. Pathology assistant is another uh, career you can do without going to medical school if you wanted to be an autopsy technician. Uh, as far as career and life advice, I mean, know what you don't know. Uh, the best thing I ever did was to recognize when I don't know something. And uh, that will then, at that point, you don't overstep your bounds. And you can teach yourself or learn from others the things that you don't know. And then you get good. So everything you don't know, you can learn and then try to get good at that. And as far as just life in general, it said life advice. Um, no, enjoy yourself. If you don't enjoy it, uh, it's not the career for you. If you feel like you enjoy it, then uh, I wouldn't worry about things like money or even a lot of free time. Because as they say, if you enjoy your work, it's not like work at all, right? Uh, so that these are the 20 or so interview questions that I got uh, recently. And please feel free to use these answers. And if you have other questions, please leave a comment. And uh, I think that should cover everything. Thanks for sticking around for over 18 minutes. I'm Dr. Wolf, forensic pathologist.